With Canada's consent, the United States War Department decided to build a military highway from Rails End at Dawson Creek, British Columbia, to Fairbanks, Alaska, to link up and supply these airfields and to provide emergency access to Alaska for troops and materiel. Good morning. The day is finally here where we get to set out and drive down the world's loneliest road. But before we can leave our wonderful stealth camping spot here, this casino parking lot, I gotta fold all this laundry because I was too lazy to do it last night. Beautiful. So last night hanging out at my casino parking lot stealth camp spot next to this broken beer bottle. I actually got a really good night's sleep. It was completely silent. We're far enough from pretty much every single road out here. And as you can see, there aren't very many other cars in this parking lot because last night, the casino was actually closed, so weren't too many people around. It is starting to get hot out though, by like 75, 80 degrees. And I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it is definitely a little bit hazy out. It smells like smoke, probably some wildfires up north that are blowing down here. But I think first thing we're gonna do today, now that we got our laundry folded, the van's ready to go, is drive over to Mile Marker Zero, the start of the world's loneliest highway, also known as the Alaskan Highway, and get ready to begin our final leg of the journey northward. And if you watched my last video, we already went and visited the sign when I got to town. And if you didn't, maybe this is your first video. Welcome to the channel, my name is Ryan. I live in the back of my self-converted camper van. Currently, I'm on a road trip all the way from Key West, Florida up to Alaska. And we are in the final leg of our journey in Dawson Creek, British Columbia, and I am so excited to finally get started on this highway. But I just want to drive back to the sign because it wouldn't feel right starting from this parking lot. I got to start from the sign. There she is yet again in all of her glory. World famous Alaska Highway. So I figured it's only right to pull up here and start our journey at the sign and cook some breakfast right out front of it before we hit the road. Some fresh raspberries, steel cut oats. So after we finish our breakfast here and head out on the highway, I'm not really exactly sure where I'm gonna camp tonight or how far I'm driving. Probably not too far because I'm giving myself some extra time to make this drive because I really want to take it slow and kind of enjoy it and see all the cool things that the uh, highway has to offer. And if you didn't already know, if you didn't watch my last video, I'm gonna be documenting every single day of this eight to 10 day journey and posting it all on YouTube. So you guys won't miss a single second. All right, delicious. This is the official start to our trip. So technically, that little roundabout right there used to be the marker for mile zero of the Alaskan Highway, but the car crashed into it. So then they moved it over here. And this is officially mile zero of the Great Alaskan Highway. So we'll start off by touching that and officially begin our journey. So the Alaskan Highway was built in 1942. And fun fact, it was actually built by Americans and not Canadians. So this little town of Dawson Creek was kind of the staging ground for the beginnings of the Alaskan Highway. And in 1942, when the Americans came up here, they turned this small rural town into almost a bustling city with 10,000 troops and tents everywhere and set up kind of as a home base for the beginning of the Alaskan Highway. And the reason that they built this highway is actually kind of fascinating too, because it had to do with Japan, Russia, and World War II. But before we head out of town, the first thing I gotta do is fill up my gas tank so we don't run out of gas while we're driving down the road. I guess it was pretty expensive. 53.75 for a quarter tank. Pretty pricey. But I guess what can you do? I knew this far north. And with that, it is time to set out on our journey. So back to what I was saying about the Alaskan Highway being built because of Japan and being built by Americans is because in World War II, when Japan was extending their reach across the Pacific to Pearl Harbor and to other places, it was kind of necessary for the US military to get 
airplanes and equipment and all of that kind of stuff up to Alaska. But back in 1942, there obviously wasn't a highway up that far north. So what they had to do was use the Northwest Staging Ground, which was essentially all of the little towns that we're about to drive through, like Fort Nelson and Dawson Creek and Whitehorse, were all different small airports along the way up to Alaska. So in order to get supplies before they built the highway, they had to take these planes from airport to airport to airport all the way up there. And it was a super dangerous journey. The first time that they sent out planes, they sent out 38 planes from Dawson Creek and 27 of them crashed and didn't make it. So for obvious reasons, that wasn't the most efficient way of getting stuff up to Alaska and then over to theoretically the Pacific and to Russia and for World War II. So the Americans and the Canadians kind of came to the agreement that they needed a highway. The Canadian government allowed American soldiers and the American army to build an American road on Canadian soil. And this road would connect all those little airfields and allow America to get the necessary planes they needed to the front lines to fight against Germany. And for the first few years, once it was finished, it essentially was an American territory and Canadians weren't even allowed to drive it unless they had a special permit because it was used solely for military purposes to defend that state in case there was an invasion and also to send supplies over the war. So when they actually started construction on the road in March of 1942, they sent 10,000 US soldiers up here to build it, where they actually built it in nine months through the winter and the summer each of which having their own challenges. In the winter, people were freezing to death. The soil was tough. It was impossible to break through things. And then in the summer brought the mud and the tractors were getting stuck in the muskeg swamps. And all around, it was just a very, very difficult project built by some very strong men. So after they finished blazing that rough path through the Northern Canadian territories, all of the little small towns that were now connected by a road turned from small northern communities into bustling cities with over 10,000 people living there. And along with those already established communities along the highway, a bunch of new communities popped up where they had sent up tent communities for the army soldiers to camp while they were building the highway. But even with that, the highway wasn't always such a good thing. In Dawson Creek, for example, a stockpile of over 6,000 sticks of dynamite blew up and pretty much leveled the entire city. This, along with the wildfires that were started by the crews and the deforestation of blazing this path through the Northwest Territory, and even the oil drums that they left behind on the side of the road from construction, that it was actually nicknamed for a while the Oil Can Highway. So although it did do a lot of good, it wasn't all peaches and rainbows. And actually, I didn't know this until I started researching this highway, but in June, while they were constructing the highway, their fears were actually realized, and Japan did indeed bomb Alaska, which I had no idea even happened, so I thought that was pretty interesting. And these bombs killed more than 100 people, and they actually seized two of the islands. So hopefully that gives you some perspective for how incredibly hard it was to build this road through territory that wasn't even officially mapped through the Rocky Mountains in a country that isn't even your home with some of the harshest winters and summers where the sun never even fully sets. It's just a true testament to how strong the men that built this road really were. But in the years since its initial construction and after the war was over, the Americans handed the highway back to the Canadians like they had initially promised. And in order to avoid any confusion or any future disputes, the Canadians actually reimbursed the Americans for the entire cost of building it. And since then, the entirety of the Alaskan Highway has been paved. There are still some offshoots off the uh, highway itself that aren't paved, but the main highway itself is paved all the way from Dawson Creek up to Alaska. And now this road is a tourist attraction where people like me who are a little bit weird want to spend four to 10 days alone driving down a barren highway through the Northern Territories of Canada and Alaska. driving on the Alaskan Highway for just about three and a half, four hours, and it seems like so far it has been mostly trees, more trees, trucks, and more trucks. Really not much else than that. It's just kind of 
empty roadways and then a ton of lifted trucks, tractor trailers, and work trucks it looks like. So not really many people out here. I haven't seen too many RVs actually. I thought I was gonna see more than I have. But I guess we're still kind of early in the summer season. So maybe not as many people are driving up right now. But I think I've done enough driving for today. We've driven a couple hundred miles and we are about 10 minutes from where we are gonna camp tonight. And supposedly it's this uh, stop right by the side of the road that has some pretty spectacular views of the mountains. So as long as the rain holds off, we should have some pretty good views at our campsite. All right, I think this is it right here. We're gonna pull into this little rest stop, pull out area. That's what we're gonna call home for the night. And it does have a pretty nice view of the mountains. Honestly, probably the best view that I've seen so far on this trip. Definitely looks pretty cool with the rain in the distance, too. This is home for the night. Oh. Wow. Really suck if I got struck by lightning up here, though. I have seen one lightning strike come from this storm. So this spot that I'm staying for the night on the side of the road here isn't like your typical rest stop. There's no bathrooms, there's no vending machines, there's no little huts. All it is is a dumpster and that sign and then this little paved area where you can pull over and rest. But I am pretty hungry, so I think I'm gonna start making some dinner. Oh, and also, I almost forgot. While I was on the road, I stopped by this gas station on the way here and I got this shirt, pretty cool. Map of the Alaskan Highway. And then also, the thing that I'm most excited about, this. And this is a 21 inch long stick of pepperoni meat. So yeah, I had to pick one of these up. I was very excited about it. But just to give you guys a little bit of perspective, when I was looking at my odometer on the way here, so far on this trip, which I set to zero when I left in Key West, I have driven 13,676 miles. And that is including the detour to California and all that side driving I did. So I have been driving for quite a long time and it feels good to finally be on this last stretch of road. In my last few videos, I've been talking about the access route that I'm gonna be taking up to the Alaskan Highway. So we have already passed that. So we took the east access route up here. Done with that part. Now we are on the Alaskan Highway section of it. So today we drove from right down here in Dawson Creek all the way up the Alaskan Canadian Highway to pretty much right around here and we're looking over the Rocky Mountains right here. So we didn't drive too far in terms of Alaskan highway driving, but we drove about three or four hours. We still got a lot to go. Let's see, what do we got in here? Ooh, I know what I want. So I picked up this eggplant when I went to the grocery store because for some reason, I was thinking about it when I was shopping and I've been craving eggplant Parmesan and I don't know why. I bought this and I think I have the rest of the ingredients. So that's what we're gonna make tonight. And I guess we are getting hit by the uh, tail end of that rainstorm, so go ahead and close this until that passes. There we go. Some breadcrumbs, which I think I have actually. Yes, right here. Oh, perfect, and they're Italian style. And then I gotta slice this bad boy up. and then just get each of these uh, eggplant slices coated in the breadcrumbs. And then we'll just repeat that process for all of these bad boys. All right, there you go. Now that we've got all of these bad boys coated up into breadcrumbs, you can take out a uh, baking sheet, or in my case, miniature pizza pans, and just circle these up on there. Oh my gosh, how perfect is that? Exactly. Enough room on these pizza pans to put these in the oven. Now we'll let these bake for about 10 minutes. Get a little bit, ow, son of a, let them get a little bit crispy. Try not to burn myself again. Then we can take them out, finish up. And also I open the door again because as you can see, the rain has passed, but it definitely, there's a bird. Definitely is still a little bit smoky out. And those wildfires out here, I'm really hoping it clears up by morning, but if not, what's in the next few days? Alrighty, it has been about 15 minutes. I think these are good to come out. Myself. Oh, beautiful. Look at those. Absolutely stunning. So for this next piece, I need some pasta sauce, but I don't have any, so we're just using some crushed tomatoes. And then we're gonna add some oregano, basil, and onion powder to it. Mm. 
We can mix all of that up. And that is going to be our sauce base for our eggplant parmesan. Oh, and also I remembered I had this. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic in there too. And now all we have to do is assemble. So pan down the bottom of the pan, and then we can add a base layer of sauce to the bottom of the pan, just a thin layer, and then take our little baked eggplant slices, lay them in there and they fit in this pan almost perfectly. I might have to cut some of them up so they fit. And now that we have our eggplant down, we can top that with some mozzarella cheese and then some Parmesan. And then just repeat that process over and over again until the pan is full. So we got some sauce, eggplant cheese, sauce, eggplant cheese, and then we can pop it in the oven. And boom, just like that, two beautiful eggplant Parmesan trays ready to go in the oven. So now we'll take those, pop those in there for just about, I don't know, 15 minutes maybe. I'm just gonna check on them every like five, 10 minutes, see how they're looking. Bye. Honestly, at this spot, I am not one bit worried about road noise. A single car drives by maybe once every 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. And I'm sure once it gets dark out, there's only gonna be less and less people. So should be a pretty quiet campsite for the night. And honestly, the van looks a lot meaner with those tires. You probably can't tell on camera, but those are some pretty nice off-road tires on both sets now. Look at that British Columbia backdrop. Smoky, hazy skies. Beautiful. Five-ish more minutes on these guys. Ooh, they look so good. Looks so good. And a truck has decided to pull up right behind me with their engine on. Hopefully that turns off. And it's nice doing the discs makes them like perfect little serving sizes. Look at that. So good. I do really wish this truck behind me would turn his engine off and if he parks there all night and keeps his engine running, <laughs> I'm going to be very sad. And probably pull up another 150, 200 yards to get away from him. Because trucks do do that, they leave their engines on all night and run AC and whatever else. <clears throat> Look at that. It's like a little eggplant lasagna sandwich. It smells so good too. It smells like a fresh baked pizza. Cheers. That is exactly the flavor that I've been craving. And it's such an easy and tasty way to get some more vegetables in because it tastes almost exactly the same as chicken parmesan. Legitimately, if you put a chicken parmesan or like a lasagna in front of me with beef in it, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, honestly, I can't take that humming sound. I'm gonna have to move farther away from that truck. <clears throat> All right, dinner is done. Got some leftovers that I'll be able to snack on tomorrow. But it is getting kind of late, and the more north we get, the brighter it's gonna stay out. The later it gets in the day, it is currently 9 p.m. So I don't really have much cleaning up to, just gotta do the dishes, and then I'm probably gonna move uh, 100 yards down that way to get away from that truck noise. But I think that's it for this video and day one of many on the Alaskan Highway. So as always, I truly, truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, if you like this video, think about clicking the subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And I will catch you guys in my next video, which will actually be tomorrow morning for me.